Hi and welcome to Tweet Street. I'm Mick Tiffany and I'm a novice lizard canary keeper and breeder. Join me on my journey as I strive to breed birds good enough for the show bench. Hello again everybody to episode 22 of Tweet Street and my trials and tribulations of canary keeping and breeding. Uh, it's been quite a busy little week, uh, on and off the pick, so to speak. Um, we've got uh, an update of the chicks, how they're getting on, the lizard canary chicks. Um, they're doing okay. A couple of little problems with these three you're looking at now um, being resolved. Uh, the Napoleon Weaver, he's going through his molt, uh, so another week on you'll see a little bit of a difference. And also we'll go back and have a look at the Raza chicks and see how they're getting and uh, we were hoping they're going to be fledging they did and we were hoping to have some hatch uh, stay tuned well during the week i had a very very nice surprise uh, one of my viewers mr novak milinkovic purchased and gave me some a couple of cameras um for the bird room in the avery thank you so much that was lovely um, I'll set them up in the next week or two. We'll have to have uh, a Novak cam and see what we can see. And see what I'll, I'll have a look, see what we can do, uh, and where to put them. So thank you very much. Uh, totally out of the blue and uh, brilliant. Thank you. Uh, onwards. Um, the weather this week's been lovely. Uh, it's been hot, 25 degrees, which is hot for the UK. And uh, the olive trees doing well, as you can see. Uh, we've got a bit of colour in the garden. And, but I was getting a little bit behind on the cleaning in the bird room because of the, um, you know, the birds going through their routine, uh, their breeding routine. Uh, you don't want to upset the chicks when they're too young. So, but it comes to say I needed to do a lot of cleaning. So I'll just put a little video on here of me. This was me actually at the beginning of the year. This was from episode one. Uh, the technique is exactly the same. Jet washer set up, give it a good clean. Uh, gets all of the muck off really quick so it is a quick way of cleaning then I get boiling water and I'll tip that all over it just to kill any uh, anything we don't want and then put them back in uh, I've also cleaned the trays underneath and put a new bedding throughout uh, so that just refreshes everything and um, yeah, I, I, I needed to get it done uh, I'll, I'll, I'll like a nice tidy bird room and uh, all the chicks are in the main are uh, an age where they're sort of they're okay they can be messed around a little bit without being upset so yeah it went quite well uh, i've moved some of the birds out some of the older birds not older birds uh, the ones that were breeding uh, mariah carey her daughter and the bird underneath her in cage three uh, i was looking at do i have another round with them or not and i was thinking will they be ready for the shows probably leaving it a bit late so I decided to retire them to the the Avery so they can get some some vitamin D some uh, sunshine so they're out there now flying around which gives me some more empty cages uh, and in those cages I'll put some of the lizard canary chicks that I'm thinking of uh, putting through to the show so they can have a cage each so when they molt they'll molt properly the colours will come through really well and um, that, that's the plan. So um, I'm in the process of cleaning all the trays at the bottom and the grills. I've just got to clean the back and then I'll transfer those birds over to there. And as you can see, the polygonium was working for the other young birds and hopefully it will work for the next batch of, I've got six young in the aviary at the moment, waiting to go into cages uh, to be separated. That'll be 12 at the moment uh, with, with several others now um, also coming through. So yeah, going quite well over to the Razas. Um, they were uh, fledging, they fledged, three chicks, all done very well. Um, one's sitting on the perch, one's on the floor asleep as per usual, is always one. And uh, another one you'll see in a moment just in the back. Uh, now we were expecting uh, four fertile eggs in another nest. Remember this bird was fostering those three and the other guys went back down, so they were a few weeks after. So I was expecting four, I was hoping for four, and they looked fertile, and they done the business. Four hatched, and look at the size of that tiny little nest uh, in the cup. Both parents uh, coming along and feeding, which was really nice to see. 
um, which is certainly good for me because they're really hard to try and feed. Um, they are tiny, tiny little birdies. Um, but, so they're both taking very good care and attention. Um, this will be their, their one round this year uh, because I've got three. This, this same pair have had the other three, which are just fledged. Uh, so they've you know, had seven in total. Uh, that would do. Um, so these will be one of my last chicks have I got, oh, I've got one more on our eggs so I'll let her have I think she's got two and one of the lizard canaries has got two fertile eggs so uh, they're, they're due next week so uh, they'll be the youngest ones and and there will be no more this season so we'll we'll give them all a bit of a, a, bit, a, bit of a breather um, ready for next season but uh, yeah it's nice to see they've done really well it's nice to see I've never had rouser canaries before first year I wasn't planning to keep them and then uh, my good old mate Bob Stedman brings me two round, so I really need to extend the garden and the bird room. I have to have a word with the wife. <laughs> That'll be a special episode if it's a yes. Uh, it'll be a very brief episode. Uh, <laughs> if it's a no, I expect a brief episode. Uh, but yeah, so that's the rises, and, uh, and they've done really well. So uh, I, I thought it was... now I did say uh, what I would try and do was get a camera in the Avery, which I did do. And I'll set it out. And I'll look at this little slow mo. Just shows you the birds jumping. You'll see that the female Napoleon does it in the back as well. They're not even flush, not even moving the wings. And uh, the proper little strong muscles in the legs. Brilliant to see. I'll just slow that one down just so you could see it. So here is uh, Mr. Napoleon himself. Uh, he's pretty finished. He pretty much finished his molt. Um, not quite as clean cut around the edges, but uh, he's quite happy. He's singing away. He seems like a little machine gun, uh, flushing himself up every few minutes. Uh, he's quite happy with himself. Um, a very fast moving bird. I, I, I'm not saying I, I weren't looking at breeding these um, if they did great, um, but they're very quick in and out of the nest. I think it's something silly like 11, 12 days uh, once the chicks hatch and they're out. Um, that's like lightning. Um, so uh, I, th I think uh, in the wild, where they, they go around in, in their hundreds and thousands potentially maybe, so you know that they've got to move on quick. Um, the locals wouldn't like that. Uh, they would, uh, in some varieties of species of birds, um, they will wait until they nest and then they will go with torches and burn, burn all the nests for the birds in because uh, they consider them as a pest. Obviously, we consider them as bloody lovely, and you know, we like to keep them. And uh, that's why we take special care of our birds. Uh, we certainly try to. But So there he is, uh, Mr. Napoleon. Um, he's singing away. Uh, very active, like I say, birds. If they do start doing any weaving nest-wise, uh, I should certainly be on that with a camera. Um, and we'll see how we get on that. They do weave. I've got some coconut... Uh, fibre in there and they do weave across the doors of the aviary and I have to go and get scissors to cut yourself in to get into the uh, <laughs> into the cages that where they are uh, into the internal flight uh, they are buggers for that um, but you watch them that they just move their heads a little bit and within a, a, a minute or two they've woven something and, and the coconut fibre is really strong and you can't open it. So when they, they, if they make a nest and that's hanging from a tree by what you think is a couple of small threads, it's as it's as strong as you like. Um, so yeah, it would be nice. I think that I would have to get some more females to get them breeding. I think he likes a little harem. Um, but uh, well, we'll see. Maybe we'll see how we go. I, I know I could get some from. I do know a breeder, and uh, I could pop and get maybe some more. So. But that's him, so I just thought I'd do a little video of him. There you go, fluffs himself up. <laughs> yeah, I suppose if I had hair, I'd try and do the same. But hey, hey ho. So, yeah, that's that's the Napoleon. Okay, last but not least, a roundup of the lizard canary chicks and how they are doing at the present time. Um, we'll start off with cage seven. Cage seven, four chicks in there. Uh, they're all doing very well. Um, parents feeding them as uh, as they should. Uh, they're all fledged. Uh, noticeably, there's one 
you'll see in a moment. There is always one that uh, leads the pack, isn't there? Um, <laughs> seems to be. You know, when you're at school, I'm 15 years old, and you know, some of the kids have got beards, you know. I'm still trying to grow, and I'm 61. Uh, but there's always one that's a little bit ahead, so the others jump out anyway, but they're being fed by the parent. <laughs> Got the siblings sitting on the floor thinking, come on. Uh, but as you can see, the ones ahead, they just, you know, they, they just seem to, they bolt, don't they? Uh, just the way it is. And uh, they even give them, dads even give them piggybacks. I think that's brilliant. I was just play with the kids. So moving down to cage nine, um, unfortunately, the hen bird died really gutted um, leaving these three and so I had to be father um, the male the, the father the real father uh, is in a different cage um, and he's looking after other chicks so uh, I couldn't uh, use him so we've got them ham feeding and uh, obviously they'll be out they're pretty much on the sticks now anyway but uh, the, the clock content just sitting there being fed um, but I'll have to adapt these shortly and um, you know, I'm sure they'll be feeding for themselves very soon anyway it's just, just always sad to lose a bird uh, it is the park here and, and the bird was my first bird that I'd run last year it was zero, oh, zero, 001 um, but um, yeah just sometimes happens. Um, it, it is unfortunate, but as you can see, these are fighting fit. Um, <laughs> they sit there waiting for their food. They see you walk in now, and uh, it, it took a, a little while to get them used to it. But uh, when they see, I'll put, I'll just put the uh, the nest basket on the outside of the cage now. Uh, at first, they were all over the place, flying around, and uh, but now they think, hold on a minute, uh, uh, it, this is food coming in, so they're quite happy. So yeah, a bit, bit of sad news for the loss of one, but uh, luckily, uh, you yes, know, we're here to be able to feed the, feed these guys. Yes, that's it. Obviously not sure yet how to take turns. Mm -hmm. um, they're looking quite mm -hmm. fit and healthy, really. I think the one in the box just had enough food. Um, I'll go in here every couple of hours, just give them a little bit. It's not massive amounts. Um, frequently is best, I think, for these rather than just stuff them to the hill uh, and leave them. A mess on you. But uh, they, mm -hmm. they seem fine. Look, I'm even having mm -hmm. to uh, give them a bit of brush up. They do get a bit sloppy yeah. around the beak. That's <laughs> not too bad. I have to teach them some table manners. See how we get on. And there we go. They're back in the nest, and I'll pop that nest back in in the cage. Uh, and that's cage, cage nine. Um, not what you expected at the end of it, right. uh, your breeding, but so uh, there you go. Um, she'd had three other chicks already adult and flying outside, and this was her second brood. Um, but she got fine, and then suddenly they're gone. So this is uh, cage fourteen. Um, he's on his own. He's just he was asked. He was flicking water on himself out the drinker, so I put a bath in, and he jumped in the bath and had a bath. I think that's brilliant to see a young bird doing that. That's really good. Cage fifteen. Um, she had two fertile eggs, both hatched, and just rung them this morning, and they're both doing well. They've, they've been eating really well. As is cage twenty, as you can see, uh, these certainly aren't being starved by the parents. These have already raised three healthy young. And uh, there's another three there. The Razas, they're now two days old. Four chicks, happy days. So, yeah, and that's a little rundown on, on what's been happening. Uh, so, again, thank you very much all for watching. Um, I hope everything's going all right with your season. Uh, I've had the ups and downs. I'm sure most people have. Um, but you know, that, that, that is the hobby uh, in your head when you plan it everything's going perfect it's all fantastic in reality there's a few spanners get thrown into the to the cogs um, it just makes it a little bit um, more of a challenge and more rewarding and uh, we, we've got to gear up now going getting these last few chicks through and then um, we can stay in the malt and then seeing what them birds coming out like that would be really interesting to see so Okay, take care everybody and uh, I'll see you hopefully next week. Bye-bye.